for tonight. It's really morning. I still am not woken up. We're giving this for a review. I was actually kind of excited about this one because it's kitchen gear. Electric water kettle for warming up either water or food. You can actually pop some popcorn in here. So the jewel comes with the canister itself with the heating element on the bottom. Comes with the user manual and then with the power cord. So let's do a walk around of this. So it's a metal container on the inside and it has measurement for every four ounces up to 16 ounces, which is two cups, which they say is the max amount that you should put in here. They have a nice neoprene cover on here so that you can carry it and hold it and not worry about it being too hot when you've got boiling or really hot water in there. Um, and then on the bottom, it has the power button and then a slide here. It has a drink mode, an eat mode, and a pop mode for the popcorn. So with the drink mode, you put it on that and it will heat up the water to boiling and turn itself off. On the eat mode, it will bring it up to boiling and then keep it there, kind of like a warm setting. And then the pop will show you that at a different time and how that part works. So I'm gonna actually plug this in. This is where you plug the power cord in um, and then the other end plugs into any kind of power source that you have. But you do have to remember it's a three prong um, plug. So I know there are some power stations that only have the two prongs. So you gotta make sure that you've got one that's got, can fit the three prong. It does use 500 watts of power, so you have to make sure that if you're using a power station that you've got one that the inverter goes up to 500 uh, watts. This is how, if we're doing oatmeal in the morning, I have this little, I mousse the mug that I fill up with water and put it on top of our little camp backpacking camp. Start that and get it going. Um, but we're gonna give this one a try. Um, we're gonna actually compare how fast it takes to boil something in this one, the way we've been doing it versus this new way. Um, so I've got two cups of water. I'm going to put one cup in each way, and we'll see how long it takes. So I'm going to actually plug this in um, to our EB3A. It's a 268 watt. This says that it takes 500 watts, so I don't really remember what the max inverter is for, on this um, power station. So we'll see if this works. Otherwise, we'll plug it in a different way. So I'll plug that in. I turn it on, I have it on the drink setting, and it is all set to go. Um, so we are at 87% on our Blue Eddy. Um, it looks like it's taking 490 watts at the moment. All right, I'm gonna put a cup of water into our traditional way of doing this. And a cup of water in this one. Which is already hot. It's already hot. I heard it sizzle when I put it in there. So I'm going to turn this other one on. So it is 9.10. Let's see how long it takes to get these two warmed up and which one will go faster. This one I'm already seeing little bubbles in it. And that was just in the time it took me to get this other one started. been about a minute and a half to two minutes and they're both to a boil. So with this I just have to turn it off manually. So I guess they both bring it up to boil pretty quickly. It's a matter of use case scenario. Um, if you're hooked up to power this is a quick and easy way to do it. There's less messing around with trying to get it set up where with our little backpacking one you need to get it all set up and hooked up to the butane canister. This is just plug and play and you're ready to go. And how much battery did it use? It ended up using, what do we say, it was 87, so it used 16% battery. Cool. All right. Let's have breakfast. Sounds good. We used it on our EB3A, I think it is, EB3A, and it's a 300 watt with a 500 watt um, inverter. So it used 20% of the power when we went to boil the water, and that was one cup of water. So you have to consider if you want to use that much power from your power station or if you need to conserve it for other reasons. Well, we got here late. It is, what time is it? Almost nine o'clock yet. Um, so we are using our Jewel electric kettle. Um, our car has electric plug. I've got the car running. 
and get some water warmed up here real quickly so we can get our meal going and we can enjoy a meal before the rain shows up. So this is actually working quite well. I'm not sure if we needed to plug it or to run the car when we're doing this or not, but we thought it'd be better to be safe than sorry. We don't want a dead battery in the morning. So a couple minutes, we'll have some boiling water and then we can get our meal going. This is not gonna work. It must be too big of a draw. I thought maybe I didn't push the power button, but I tried it again and it popped and it's not working. So I guess we're gonna have to come up with plan B. Shucks, I was hoping this was gonna work. All right, plan B. We have a Jackery 1000. We decided to plug it into that. We know we're gonna be traveling tomorrow and we can get recharged from our car battery. So we are not worried about using up the power. Button. You done making noise over there? <laughs> not worried about using too much power. Plus it's a 1000, so I don't expect it to drop too much. So let's see how long it takes. All right, sorry, getting some little bubbles in there. It's been just a couple minutes and we've got boiling water and it looks like we have only used 2% on our Jackery 1000. So um, yeah, this is a great way to warm up some water real quickly. Now we'll put it in our meal and wait 10 minutes. So for this meal, it just needed one cup of water. So that's why it only took a couple of minutes and it did not take much power from our Jackery. So pros and cons of our previous setup with the backpacking stove and our Musa cup versus the Jewel. First thing I, I notice is that this is much wobblier. It's a little bit, it could get knocked off and you could have an issue with getting hot water spilled all over you and burn yourself, um, which would not be a good situation. Um, the other thing is with this, you have the canisters and you need to, uh, if you're running out of fuel with a canister, and for environmental reasons, you have to keep buying new ones of these and replacing them, and then they get thrown in the landfills. So with this, it's much sturdier. So if you're it, you're not gonna have any issues like that. One of the other big things is once this comes to a boil, this whole thing is hot. Just pick it up. I need to end up using a pot holder of some sort. This came with our backpacking stove. So I need to use this to be able to pour it um, with the jewel. Since it has a neoprene case on it, I can hold it. I've got a handle here. Um, I feel like the handle is a little bit not tight enough that I won't feel comfortable pouring it real well holding the handle, um, but I can definitely take a grasp of the whole thing, pour it that way. So, and without it getting hot because it's protected with the neoprene case versus this, I would not feel comfortable holding onto this because this is metal and it's conducting the heat and it would be hot. So overall, my first impressions is I'm very impressed with this. It's, it's heavy, it definitely feels like it's good quality. Um, it really heated up the water quite quickly, faster than I expected it to with something like this. So yeah, I am excited to give this a try on more of our trips. Excited to try like just warming up some soup or something in this. And Matt loves his popcorn, so we're gonna have fun trying that out. But it is kind of small, it's not gonna be able to do a whole lot of pups, but we'll give it a try. I'm excited to try the popcorn. I think popcorn's gonna be cool. So I started with a lid full of popcorn kernels and put it into the electric kettle. Then I added probably about a half a tablespoon of butter. Put the lid on. Turn it on. It's on the popcorn mode. And they said when it starts to pop, just kind of pick it up and swirl it around a little bit to get the kernels to move. So let's see how it goes and how long it takes. At the five minute mark, I'm starting to hear a couple pops. You can see the steam coming out the top there. So it's definitely getting some heat in there. Okay, yep, see the pop starting. Okay, don't get dizzy with me because I twist this around. All right, it's just been over 10 minutes. It's supposed to turn off when it's done, but I haven't heard any popping for the last probably 30 seconds, so I'm gonna turn it off myself. Um, let's dump it into a bowl and see. 
Oh yeah, there's a lot of kernels that didn't finish. Hmm, interesting. Yep, yeah, and there's, let's see here. Definitely some residue down there. They do sell an accessory for the popcorn thing that goes through the lid and you can spin it from the top. Um, that will move the kernels on the bottom around. So if you want to do a lot of popcorn popping in this, I would think that that would probably be a great accessory to get along with it. Um, but if you're camping and you just want a quick, easy way to make some popcorn, let's give it a try. Mm, it's okay. Definitely not the best, but it could satisfy a little snacky urge you may be having. The other thing they say is if you want to make more popcorn, they recommend that you wait 10 to 20 minutes for this element to cool off before you attempt to make a second batch. So, um, as a popcorn popper, eh, give it maybe a five out of 10, three out of 10. Um, but for heating up water quickly, definitely probably eight to nine out of 10. This thing is very solid. It's not going anywhere. You don't have to worry about the flame. You don't have to worry about knocking the container off and you don't have, need to worry about replacing canisters. I don't know, I think this for the win. If you're interested in this, we will have the link in the description below. Ask any questions that you may have about it. What do you use to warm up your water while you're camping? So get your boil on and get out and do some camping.